Hello and welcome to Politics Today. I'm Farooq Qutafi. We are once again we are going to talk about India-Pakistan relationship because it is the hot button topic right now. It is uh, what uh, many in South Asia are, are uh, still focusing on. And one uh, update is important. On one side, we saw a naval episode today uh, where uh, Indian submarine tried to enter Pakistani waters and it was stopped. Uh, on the other side, uh, uh, regarding de-escalation, one important development is that uh, in Indian media is now reporting that uh, sources, and they are quoting sources, of course, uh, uh, by which we are going to construe that it was Ajit Doval or somebody on that level, uh, has told them that now they are going to focus on diplomatic uh, offensive rather than fighting more fights till the time something new happens. And by something new, uh, means something like Obama, God forbid, or something else of that sort. But uh, important thing is, if you really want to, want to have an impact, these sources will have to speak on record rather than off record. But today we are going to talk about all these matters and more and how to actually build peace. Pakistan has made, made no bones about, uh, about its uh, ambition to build peace in the region. Pakistan keeps on talking about uh, uh, peace building and we are going to talk about that. Uh, let me first uh, introduce the guest I've got in the studio. Then we have a small uh, report for you. After that, we come back and start discussion. Uh, right next to me is Heather Madhisab, who is a senior analyst, anchor and a geopolitical expert. Thank you very much, sir, for being part of the program. Next to him is Dr. Manzoor Afridi, expert on foreign affairs, teaches. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Next to him is Ibrahim Khan Saab, uh, who is uh, MNA uh, of uh, uh, PTI, Pakistan Tariq and Saab, the ruling party. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Now let us watch the report and then we uh, start discussion. Prime Minister Imran Khan is committed to bring enduring peace and stability in the region while supporting all peace initiatives. Pakistan desires a peaceful neighborhood and remains committed to peace and stability in the region. The world appreciated Pakistan's overtures and efforts to preserve peace. Pakistan remains committed to peace while resolute in defense of our sovereignty for which we have demonstrated both our capacity and will. The leadership of both the nations seem to have decided where to lead the two countries. Pakistan wants peace and prosperity, whereas India committed aggression against Pakistan. Peace is our ultimate objective. The release of Indian pilot captured by Pakistan is a gesture of peace. The entire nation, political parties and the armed forces are united under one flag to defend the motherland. Peace is imperative for development, progress and prosperity of any country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi should know that Pakistani nation is united having the capability to respond to any misadventure from India. Chief of the Army Staff, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, said that the country would retaliate to any aggression in self-defense. <laughs> Narendra Modi is whipping up anti-Pakistan emotions under political compulsions in the wake of the upcoming general elections there. India has been committing brutalities in occupied Kashmir to suppress indigenous movement to achieve their right to self-determination. World powers should play their due role in ensuring peace in the region. Thousands of tweets have been posted with the hashtag Nobel Peace for Imran Khan 
since Prime Minister Imran Khan extended olive branch to India during the joint sitting of the parliament. The call became the top Twitter trend in Pakistan, with users demanding the prize for the leader. Prime Minister Imran Khan played a sagacious role in reducing the recent tensions between Pakistan and India. He asked India to follow the path of peace and resolve the issues through negotiations instead of escalation. किसी किस्म का डायलॉग करना चाहते हैं दहशत गर्दी के ऊपर हम तैयार हैं हमें बैठ के बातचीत से अपने मसले हल करने चाहिए. Imran Khan invites India for talks. Says better sense should prevail. So you have seen a very comprehensive, detailed report on how Pakistan is pushing for peace, and uh, we keep on seeing belligerence from Indian side. Let me now open the floor uh, for discussion, and let me ask Hatter Madhi Sahab for your opening statement regarding where are we at vis-a-vis -vis India. And what can be done right, uh, right now? Thank you, Farooq. Farooq, you know, I, I'd like to give a set a stage by saying that you know the famous uh, Clausewitz said that war is is a continuation of politics by other means, yeah. and that's really important to understand. And for uh, this continuation of politics in the context of India, we need to understand that for India it means. Uh, the Kashmir issue, and it means the Kashmiris' objectives of self-determination. Mm -hmm. If we understand that as the basic concept mm -hmm. of what threatens this peace of of between Pakistan and India, not just that of the whole region, we've got to understand what are the elements of national power. Mm -hmm. You know, we in this past week or so, we've been discussing. You know, uh, they 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 intruded. We responded. We attacked. They, but the elements of national power and military is a very small portion. Right. It Na is the last action. It is the last action, and national power really is 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 about you know your industrial base, your economy, your social cohesion, your natural cohesion, your yeah. territory, your geography, population, your yeah. population, your technical, uh, you know, your technology, all that. If you take all of that, all of those factors, what you what we're really seeing is that India has basically said mm -hmm. that all these elements of national power at their disposal mm -hmm. have failed. In their objectives of putting an end to this or or sorting out the Kashmir issue. Right now, the point is that, and I, and I, before you pass it on to, I want to say that Kashmir is an idea mm. whose time has now come. Right, and and we really need to understand this because the world has learned in history, Vietnam was an idea that came, Algeria was an idea that came. Uh, Korea, even though it's divided into two, is an idea. Of Afghanistan, we see now, is an idea of freedom that has come. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, post 9/11, mm -hmm. the element of freedom got equated with terror, mm -hmm. because someone had to achieve certain objectives. Right. India has successfully, so far, mm -hmm. equated this struggle for the rights of Kashmiris with with terror, whereas this is now a completely indigenous. Uh, uh, movement, movement, right. and we we can talk about this. I think we and really we are going to talk about yes. that. Let me bring in Afridi Sahab, your opening statement, sir. Uh, where uh, where are we at? What is your assessment of current circumstances and climate? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Pakistan, uh, just we have now watched the report. It is peace-loving country and wanted to promote peace in the region. And from every gesture, we know that how we are pushing for peace. Let me tell you that according to Mao Zedong, war is politics with bloodshed okay. and politics as war without bloodshed. So let's to play politics, mm -hmm. but politics in without true, bloodshed. Yeah, without bloodshed, right? Politics in positive terms. I mean, yeah. let's to have dialogue. Not Modi's and politics. Not Modi's <laughs> politics and not the dirty politics what they are doing and what they have done and they have played in this region. Right. Uh, uh, in this age of globalization, I'm, uh, I very much agreed with Mehdi Saab that uh, uh, military, this is not the only source of power. Of course, you have to look for many, many other things. Let me tell you that South Asia is a region where, uh, you know, the intra-regional trade, I mean the trade among the members of the South Asian region where are 
eight members of the SARC, mm -hmm. it is only 5%, which okay. is really less, right? And if you uh, look to the poverty, so the, the, the South Asian region, it is one of the impoverished regions of the world, right? Why uh, European Union that is developing? Why ASEAN that is going on the way of progress? Mm -hmm. Why uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization that is rising? Right. Because of the intra-regional trade. So we have yet to exploit all those sources where we can move. Even look to India, where more than 60% people, they don't have toilets, right? Okay. So in this, uh, I mean, in this scenario... I didn't want if, to uh, mention the embarrassing facts, but you have. This is a so fact. It's okay, yeah. This is a fact. It is a fact. So India, India has to look for all these things where Pakistan is ready to fight. You know, uh, let's to talk on water issue, let's to talk on visas, let's to talk on tourism, but of course you have to solve the Kashmir issue. Right. This is a point of contention and this is the unfinished agenda of the partition. Indian subcontinent partition. Right, that is very important. Let me bring in uh, Ibrahim Khan Sahib, your take so far. And what is the government doing right now to build peace? Uh, actually, I think it was a three-dimensional approach which India has used. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, basically uh, uh, the Kashmir issue. And the most eminent and the urgent one was their internal elections. Okay. And thirdly, the CPAC. Mm -hmm. Your geographical uh, uh, position and the uh, reason why India is so upset about it because in five to ten years' time, Pakistan will be economically uh, uh, growing very strong on a very strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, fast Trajectory. pace, yeah. uh, very yeah. fast pace. Yeah. So keeping these three in mind, they have escalated the war. Okay. And uh, uh, escalated, the, escalated the confrontation. Confrontation basically, uh, I mean, you know, it has not been called war so far because of our restraints and uh, because of our courage and the way we have uh, our, uh, our government has responded in, yeah. in return. Sir. We have only been on the defensive side and this is what our religion has told us, our holy prophet has told us right uh, from the very beginning, <clears throat> like you don't go on offensive. And uh, until the enemy is, uh, you know, penetrates into your territory or into your home or into your place, then you have reserved all the rights to strike back. Right. And this is exactly what we did. And this so, is uh, uh, the message Imran Khan has given to the world. Mm -hmm. It has become very clear now that uh, who's playing warmonger. And I would go to the extent, I mean, I'm not just saying it so uh, name calling. Mm -hmm. But the way uh, Modi has portrayed his policies, right. uh, very simply, I mean, there was a Hitler in the West, hmm. and he is proving to be Hitler of the East, okay. because he is not sparing Muslims. He cannot oh, stand. Give him time; he will grow out of East. <laughs> I, I I hope he does. But you see, uh, no, look at the Sikhs. Not look out at of the Hitler Christians. Mode. I'm saying uh, he will grow out of East. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, uh, this is the approach he's using the, uh, that uh, Hinduism and not uh, sparing anyone else. I mean, all the minorities yeah, are Hinduism being here. Not Hinduism per se, uh, Hindutva. Hinduism. Hinduism is a religion, has been there. For Definitely, it has been there. It's like for, Zionism. Say, you see, we as Muslims ruled India, India for approximate of the subcontinent for more than uh, 700 years. Okay. And we never thought about uh, eliminating the Hinduism because it is a religion and uh, all the religi religions should be respected. Okay. And they have only, they have got, he has got only like 70 years of history and he's talking about, you know, killing Muslims, killing uh, Sikhs, killing uh, Christians and, uh, and he's practically doing that. Right. And Kashmir uh, is a part one, and one of quick that. Uh, disclaimer before we move forward. I have never ruled a thing in my life. I don't know. There must be others who have ruled India, not me. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> but Muslims, uh, the Muslims uh, still. Uh, 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 now, what, what do you expect next? So, so, I, so I think before we go to next, and I will tell you what I yeah. expect next, uh, clearly. This is, we have really have to understand uh, what are the contra uh, contrasting objectives between Pakistan and India. Pakistan's objective is very simple. We're saying, hey, listen, 
the Kashmiris want right to, of self-determination. We're willing to sit and we're willing to talk and we're willing to come to a, to a solution that, you know, gives a bit of what we want and gives a bit of what India wants. Now, what what is Modi's? I mean, and, and let's say Modi's objective. When I say right. not, let me not say India, because we were close to some kind of a uh, some breakthrough. solution breakthrough. You know, about yeah. 10, 15 years ago. During Pervez Musharraf. That's right? correct, and and there was very close to very close yeah. to some kind of a solution. Now, uh, Prime Minister Modi is very clear. I mean, he's got four objectives, and you know, the more I've studied this and studied media in the state, the four objectives very clear. One, absolutely agree with you. There, there's a political objective. You know, sure. there's a vote bank that he needs to get. But the other three are far more se serious and 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 sinister. Mm -hmm. His objective is to continue to tell the world that the Kashmiri uh, liberation movement is not indigenous. Right. Whatever you see is actually sponsored by Pakistan. We, we, we supply arms, we do training, and we instigate and we fan the fins. And that's, that's what he attempted to do. As a consequence, we, India, will have to now crack down very harshly mm -hmm. on the Kashmiris. And please, mm -hmm. now that you've all started to object to the human rights violation and the UNHCR report and the EU yeah. parliament and, and all that, Please do not come back to us and say, hey, listen, why is the violation? So he's actually got a very sinister plan. Right. We did Pulwama. Mm -hmm. I think it's false flag. Let me say it was an indigenous, you know, to give the, give the benefit of doubt. It was okay. done by Dar. But they used it and said, now we're going to use this and we're going to crack down. Okay. But look at the facts on the ground, Farooq. There were 100,000 people have died. Uh, God knows how many, several hundred thousand more have been injured. Right. Women have been raped. There's a 500,000 to 700,000 military presence in India for the last 26 years. Right. And the movement hasn't died down. Mm -hmm. Now, the point that India makes is these people have groups within Pakistan <coughs> who are being, uh, you know, resourced, financed, and they go across the border. Today, not even a rabbit can cross the line. I'm yeah. honestly telling you, yeah. there are joint monitoring posts, there's electric wire fencing. It is absolutely impossible. The world must understand mm -hmm. that while we're doing all we are to, to do what we can on our side of the border, mm -hmm. but listen, there are Kashmiris here and there are Kashmiris there. <coughs> you cannot kill an idea. I, I will hypothetically throw out a question to, to everyone. Assuming mm -hmm. whatever organizations that are currently labeled Mm -hmm. We say, all right, we're taking them over, we're going to do this. We are and doing that. And yeah. we're doing that. But you know what? What is the danger? Let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. Blowback? The da no, the danger is that extreme elements mm -hmm. within these mm -hmm. will then go out onto a and says, we do not buy what you're saying. We will crack down, they will crack. We will bump here, they'll come out. Yeah. When an idea starts to catch fire, mm -hmm. You cannot. So the world, what the world has to do, Faro, the world has to say, it's a chicken and egg. Mm -hmm. The world has to say, you know what? We've got to douse the fires in Kashmir. And you don't douse the with, fires in with Kashmir water. with, with, with firepower. Okay. You've got to give them the right of self-determination. Anything on our side of the border will vanish like smoke. Right. Uh, 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 these are what to expect next? Uh, well, there is no way for both India and Pakistan, but only dialogue, diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And first, that is the, uh, you know... Uh, we, we but I can see this. Why can't India? We can see it, that diplomacy is the only way forward. Why can't Indian administration see this? Because of two things. One, what the Modi had promised uh, during the last uh, elections, to the Indian people, they, if he got elected, so he would do this, this, this. And the two were big promises. One, yeah. you know, to talk about and to have amendments in the two articles of the Kashmir. 370, you know, uh, 35 and 35A, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even the hearing that is going on in the Indian Supreme Court, but still that has not been done according to the wishes of the Modi. Mm -hmm. And second, to build, to rebuild, you can say, or to build the Man, uh, Ram Mandar, right? They are, they are uh, at the site of the Babu Mosque. So, yeah. Ayodhya. He is not successful over there. Now, to hide his face, right? Yeah. So, he is, uh, you know, doing such kind of things. One. Not to, not to mention the damage he has done to economy. 
through very demonetization much. Yeah, very much. and GST, which was not calibrated. He is, he, he is a crazy man, you know. <laughs> I, I don't man. want to call him a crazy man. He is. But crazy man <laughs> doctrine is also there. So yeah, that, that is in the shape of, of Hindutva course. by the supporters, supporters of RSS and so many other extremist organizations. You want to chip in? I, I, you know, but very I, quickly, uh, I'll, I'll sure, go. Okay. Sure, sure. sure. No, no, go Please. ahead, Aaron. Uh, I, you know, honestly, sorry. I just want to say, you know, we have to remember that he's the Prime Minister of India. Yeah. He controls the military. He yeah. controls the might. He decides what is going to go. For him and for a very large part of the Indian uh, population and the Indian establishment, Kashmir is a non-negotiable item. Okay? And, and that is for them. When we say we want diplomacy, what we're really saying is, let's talk and let's see what we can do to Kashmir. Right. Like you said just now, Dr. Saab, they may actually uh, eliminate 370, remove the special status of Kashmir. And I'm telling you, I see a very dangerous pattern developing. You know, India and Israel have a very close nexus. Okay. The only other contentious issue of freedom is Palestine. Okay. And despite all the UN uh, resolutions, and despite all the support, and despite the support of the US at one time, mm -hmm. this issue has not been solved. Sir. What has Israel done? Mm -hmm. And this is what India is going to do, or at least attempt to do. Mm -hmm. Israel said, Depopulate. you have to depopulate yes. the space, yeah, yeah. the right. physical space. Right. Yes. Occupy it yourself. Push these guys into the sea, into the West Bank, into Jordan, get them out. The Modi, Modi, your only way of retaining Kashmir without Kashmiris is depopulate it. Yeah, and this Kashmiri. is what they are trying to do. And I'll tell you what, they, if they succeed, okay. if they succeed, you will find refugees streaming across. Yeah, and that becomes the, a volatile. very volatile situation. Let me let, uh, go back to after these uh, uh, And sir, Ibrahim sir, I'm Let me resume my talk. So, Please. Uh, I mean that even, God forbid, if you kill millions of people, mm -hmm. the last option you have, that is dialogue. So there are three ways. One, that is the bilateral mechanism between yeah. India and Pakistan. Yeah. Imran Khan has also offered to India, let's to have dialogue bilaterally, okay? Yeah. And it is very feasible. Both the states, they can do. Pakistan is willing for that. Mm -hmm. Second, that is through SARC. Even, uh, I mean, that uh, the, that is a multilateral forum. And it was said that... Uh, SARC is alive? So, I'm coming, I'm, to, I'm coming to that point. So this is breathing slightly more than OIC. Yeah, because because <laughs> no, of the... OIC is alive. Because of the Indian hegemony, mm -hmm. that is dead. And that is not functional. Our SEFTA is not working. Okay. South Asian free trade area is not working. The third option, that is even now Pakistan and India, they are permanent members in Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Yeah. Even we can utilize the platform of ECO, where now Pakistan SEO. is on very good terms with Russian Federation as well. China, is, of course, is our friend. Yeah. India is also uh, on good terms with China as well, especially if we talk in the trade relationship. If not the other, the, 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 the boundary issue or the Tibet or the Dalai Lama issue, right? Mm. So, I mean, at last, you have to come to the, the dialogue. So, why not to start today? Why so, not Why right. not to give a better future for our generation? That's that's a very good argument. And Ibrahim Khan sir, uh, do tell, uh, do you expect any change of uh, attitude after elections are over in India? Uh, I hope that uh, Modi loses. Oh. Uh, Whether he loses or wins, okay. I mean, you if, have to no, tell if me. he loses, then the uh, the better sense will prevail. But okay. if he wins, then uh, things are going to be further into escalating mode. Okay. And uh, it's not, I mean, I, I initially said this three uh, obje objectives, those were the initial objectives. Mm -hmm. There is a long-term planning, and we were only uh, including Israel in it. No, there are some bigger uh, partners in the play also. Actually, I don't want to even include Israel. Netanyahu may be, okay. but he will be uh, um, uh, an old story very soon. But you see, the concept is like to, initially what they wanted to do was to, uh, again, I'll mention that book, uh, Confessions of the Economic Hitman. Mm -hmm. They have su succeeded in that, and uh, they were able to burden you with 24 trillion rupees in a span of 10 years. Okay. And once you're financially weak, 
then it gives the enemy a better edge and better opportunity right. to attack you at the time of no, weakness. I, I get that, sir. Uh, Ibrahim Hansa, let us talk about contingency planning. The government uh, must have some kind of uh, uh, vision uh, regarding how, what happens after India's elections are over. Tell me what, uh, how Pakistan behaves if, uh, uh, you know, Congress or any other, uh, any other party wins. And how does the government handle India if Modi is there and he has the same posture? Sir, we have so far and will in the future. We are saying that only the sanity should prevail. We both are nuclear powers. And it will be a war of nobody's winning. But that is a wish, not a policy, is it? This is not a wish. This is the factual uh, ground reality. Yeah, but you have and to have a policy to push it. Yes, we have the policy, and we have a policy of defense. We'll, uh, def def uh, I mean, defend our country, our boundaries, and uh, any uh, uh, kind of uh, intrusion by India. Uh, they have already, I mean, we have given them the uh, very strong message. Okay. We have the capability. Our armed forces we are 15 it. years uh, of uh, battle hardened uh, armed forces of Pakistan, mm -hmm. including our Air Force, uh, our capabilities have uh, proven that. But we don't want to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. That direction is peace. If he is really interested in war, mm -hmm. I would suggest him to let's uh, wage war against poverty, yes. injustice, yes. Uh, uh, illiteracy. Right. And, uh, That's a very good sentiment. Yes. Uh, Heather Madhi sahab, you wanted to add here. Uh, I, I, you know, honestly want, and I want to come back to, back to, real, well, not, I mean, when I say reality, <laughs> I don't mean, why sure. we were talking about the future, but I want yeah. to talk about now. You know, one of the things that, that really came out very starkly when this incident happened was how the international community. Which one, Pulwama, Balakot, or that recent uh, one? The, the, the recent one, right? Yeah. How did the international community respond to India's uh, in, uh, flagrant violation, both of our sovereignty, our borders, etc.? No country uh, in the world um, condemned that portion. Mm -hmm. The only uh, statement that came out of everybody, including our friends, China, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, UAE, including Iran, Iran is a little upset with us, um, America, Russia was, we urge both countries to exercise maximum restraint. Yeah. No one said, yes. no one said, uh, we also condemn the flagrant violation of international boundaries, sovereignty. We believe that this should not have happened. So that for us is, should be a wake-up call. That the way even our own friends look at this is something that we should not be very happy no, about. Even but, though, let me, let me, let me. No, it's a very fascinating but, statement. But I have to ask you something. Yes. Else. Is it a reflection of where we are at yes. uh, regarding diplomacy? Or is it a commentary on the new world order? Because things are changing. It's, it's a combination and every of Every country is very cautious. Exactly. Uh, I think in it's a, making statements. Farooq, it's a combination of both. The key player in all this, by the way, is the US, mm -hmm. as it was in Afghanistan. As long as the US continues to see this issue as a Pakistani problem, mm -hmm. not a Kashmiri problem to be solved, the world will respond in the way that we did. Even though OIC past resolutions, you know, condemning India's aggression, you know, in the final declaration of 50 sections, mm -hmm. there wasn't a single mention of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. uh, Syria was mentioned, Libya was mentioned, Palestine was mentioned, Yemen was mentioned, Iran was mentioned, but the declaration itself, mm -hmm. which to me is really the final outcome of a conference, not the resolution. Right. It, no mention. The only mention was, we lowered the release of the pilot by. So for us, this is a really big wake-up call. I was talking to the parliamentary secretary the other day, and she said, we really have to work and convince the international community mm -hmm. that the peace of this region lies in solving the Kashmir problem. You can tell us, hey, stop this, do this, control them, arrest them, capture this, take, dismantle. But the bigger issue is not this. That's right. a minor issue. Okay. The big issue is that the fire is burning. And let me, let me just... just, just uh, to what you know, your question, what happened next? Listen, India has crossed two out of three thresholds. Right. They attacked us with air, mm -hmm. never done before. Mm -hmm. They violated not just the LOC, the international boundary. The only space they haven't violated so far, the threshold, mm -hmm. is the ground attack. Mm -hmm. We, I'm, I'm telling you, this guy is not going to take it lying down. He's got egg on his face. He's humiliated. He's insulted in the world. He. When I say he, he's going to use something, some tactic, somewhere 
to come and get back at us and the world must be warned that peace if it's at danger is not in danger because of the jihadi so called jihadi outfits or the yeah. Allah. they're nothing i'm okay. telling you they're nothing it is modi if right. Modi reacts, that is where the danger is. And I think economists cover other magazines, other papers have actually reflected on that negativity that India is projecting. But with due respect, these are wonky times. Uh, Ibrahim Saab, you wanted to say something, I'm going to come to you. But these are wonky times and that's why you don't see, with the exception of Venezuela and a couple of other places, you don't see that kind of statements coming from any country. Uh, but uh, regarding fixing the foreign policy, and how can we actually start delivering in a way that people not only stand with us, but they are physically and visually uh, uh, there. People can register them. How is that? I happen? think this was the uh, best way, the way we have demonstrated uh, internationally. Even though they violated our airspace and they were shot down, we handed over their uh, pilot back. Yeah. Okay, it could have gone back like in six months time but this was a gesture of not weakness but a gesture of like we don't want to get into the war okay and we have told the world around and uh, you look at uh, different magazines and different uh, news media internationally they are appreciating and they are uh, I mean, receptive no, to the uh, no i know that but uh, frankly you know, heather madisa has pointed out certain facts okay. that uh, the kind of statements we were expecting because uh, you know at the crossing a threshold between two na uh, nuclear states is not a simple matter it is it, not it should raise a lot of eyebrows it yes. didn't i tell you why uh, we have a very uh, a clear saying in, in our uh, uh, region or in our Sraiki. Mm -hmm. They call it ke, uh, sar te hai, sar mm -hmm. and we are ready for that. We are quite capable of handling. We need international, uh, uh, internationally uh, need to uh, tell the people the truth. Yeah. But if you're expecting that somebody will come to rescue you, no, it will be you. The no, 22 I'm not crore, asking that. I'm just asking for It will for be the 22 crore people of Pakistan who will stand up for their uh, country right. and for their... Uh, Afridi sahab, uh, your take, sir, I wanted to come to you uh, um, um, at the uh, final moment in this uh, talk or this uh, um, entire uh, circle. Because uh, I wanted to know what is your take on international system? Where are we at there? Do you think that at this moment what is happening is because of our failure of imagination and diplomacy or is it because the world is changing? Well, there are two things mm -hmm. and I think it's a combination of both. World has been changed for the last, you know, 17 years when 9-11 happened, when American and NATO forces came to Afghanistan, and when war on terror started. So, of course, everywhere, then the freedom struggles, the armed movements, you know, the, the just movements for, for their freedom, they were crushed. And, of course, that is, you can say, a blow for Pakistan's diplomacy all over the world, especially if you talk about the Kashmir freedom struggle. One, so that's why uh, we know that there was so much pressure on Pakistan, uh, despite of the Pakistan sacrifices in this war on terror, and everybody knows about the facts. Okay. Second, uh, of course, uh, there uh, is uh, a failure on our own side as well. I, I mean, look, uh, you have now to engage with the world. Mm -hmm. Of course, th there was a time, but now you have to engage with, with the world, look for some other dimensions as well. That How? is, I mean How? trade, okay. I mean trade, okay? Explore new markets, mm -hmm. uh, expand trade relationship, ex explore some alternatives for trade, you know, to have uh, increase in your trade. And second, build your industries. Now we are hoping you know we hope uh, under the cpec you need that, money for that right. so and under you the need CPAC, fdi under, for that yeah so you have also to to overcome your corruption and all these things so now world is not only to engage you on the basis of ideology on the basis of some belief or some kind of that i'm talking uh, you know uh, to to look into the OIC reaction about okay. this Kashmir issue or the end of Pakistan conflict. So you have to invest on your own people. Uh, I mean to also educate your people. Let me tell you an example. 
India, it has more than 100, according to some estimates, 150, some people they are telling 160 chairs in, in foreign universities in Cambridge and Oxford yeah. and America and Columbia University. And our and chairs China. were not even filled. Yeah, we have only 14 chairs. And they were not filled. And yes, I was for there. For five years. Yeah, not filled, right? For last year, that, that was, you know. So how can we promote our soft image over there? Right. India has engaged academia, policy makers, think tanks around the world in almost all the major countries. So and, we are failing. And if we actually educate our children and do whatever you are saying, how much time will it take? After industrialization, how much time will it take but, to be there where we want to be? I, well, so I'm just going to come uh, to you. Uh, Ibrahim uh, Saab ha has actually raised a finger as well. Please go ahead. Of Afrizu course, Saab. of course, it will take time. Mm -hmm. I think maybe 15 to 20 years it has to take. So what happens till then? We, we, <laughs> honestly, we don't have time. No, I, I, I don't think we, we really have time for that for 20 to 50 years plan. It is a long-term planning, time. but we are working on it. All the points that he has raised from economic point of view, yes, we are working on those. And our friend China is being a bigger part of that. Generous. And I mean, I mean yeah, it's uh, their, we have to they, yeah, they have equal interest in it. And, uh, but we have know, to diversify the portfolio. Let me, let we, me we uh, put in a, a reality check here. Mm -hmm. You know, Imran's stature as a prime minister massively improved. Pakistan's stature has also massively improved. Where, where are we faltering? To your question, we faltered in diplomacy. Mm -hmm. We have failed to uh, present our case in a coherent manner. Okay. You know, honestly, the last, and I, you know, it's, it's easy to blame the past, but let's look at it. The last 10 years, in the last two previous governments, we really had never presented a case. These, these uh, governments were literally hostage of the U.S. The, the previous uh, former prime minister was now a convicted criminal. For four years, he was a foreign minister. I mean, can you, and there were two other people who were actually fighting over who should have a bigger office. You know, Sartaji and other mm -hmm. gentleman, I'm forgetting his name. Is such Tariq a, Fatmi. Sir. Tariq Fatmi, right? What, so, you, you know, this th doesn't happen overnight. And, and, and now we have a government, uh, yes. you know, which has actually stood up and said, listen, we are going to go 10 steps forward if India is going to come forward. So here's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. We have to increase our diplomacy, okay. which means we have to develop a very coherent national narrative, which we repeat. With the world at, or with, with India? No, no, with the world, sir. India world will. India, as well. India will not. In, of course, with India. Lobby There's inside. Lobby India. with India because the Indians have. There is a lot of people in India who know that uh, Modi is a warmonger. He's using this for his own political objective. The other, I completely agree. You know how much India spends on the U.S. alone a year? A mm hundred -hmm. million dollars in media, in think tanks, Propaganda. in academia. hundred million dollars is not a small amount of money. It is not. The Hudson Institute, in which our, uh, Hussain Akani is our, our friend, uh, the Indian mole Hussain Akani writes for, the second largest uh, contributors after uh, Jews are Indians. Okay. We have, and like somebody said, we don't have occupied the chairs that we occupy. I'll tell you a personal story. I took on Hussain Akani personally uh, on media uh, through several articles. The articles were so stinging that he actually approached one forum that had published it and said, if you don't take out Heather Mehdi's article from this forum, I will sue you in the UK. Okay. That person then calls me and he says, unfortunately, I have to take your article. I said, why? This is my responsibility. At that time, I lived in Canada. I said, let him sue me in Canada. I will go to court. But such is the power that he was able to get my article off. Now, and I did that all alone. I had no support from anybody, no government. There, no there has to be a, uh, some kind of support. So, so the, Ibrahim sir, Saab and then what, Afridi Saab. Yes. <clears throat> my point <throat> is that in the last six months since we have taken over, our foreign policy has really stood fast. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay. He has sitting next to we, me. We, yeah, I know. I mean, uh, yeah. For the audience, Please I'm saying on. if it is. No, no, no. Yeah. Anyways, our uh, first time, uh, after a long time, mm -hmm. our foreign, foreign policy have been very clear. We have uh, taken uh, a clear stance and uh, priorities which suit Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And you have seen the result that... Uh, Donald Trump, in his first statement, 
asking for do more and in the second statement asking for uh, help in the negotiations yes. with the Afghans. Right. right. I tell you what, Pakistan, yes, spending these billions in US and here and there and yeah, it is to basically neutralize or to make a better, build a public uh, opinion, yes, but that public yes. opinion public goes yeah. deaf when it comes to the Muslims. Okay. Okay. I don't want to believe that. And Come on uh, now. I, I tell you what, very clearly, I have, I have, I have lived there for 18 years okay. in, so in, in California. Mm -hmm. So I understand what it is. Mm -hmm. It is finally, and once again, I'm saying mm -hmm. we have to be on our guards and we have to make our, uh, I mean, uh, uh, assist our own, own, own system and we have to strengthen our own system economically and uh, uh, militarily and everything we have yeah, to do it we, by we ourselves it. and for right. that uh, we are so going in the right direction the as a government phase. and I don't agree with the point of view that we do not have a stronger uh, foreign, policy. foreign policy. It has really uh, been the best one so far within six months. Look at the time period. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, when we, we were talking about foreign policy, like we yeah, were yeah, talking yeah, about the, the last 10 years. Of course, yeah. of course. Of, yeah. There was uh, no foreign policy. There was no foreign policy. Of course. But uh, you have to have a foreign policy, right? We are. By the way, California California is such a lovely place. I'm, I'm glad that we spent that much time. Sure. Uh, Afridi sir, your conclusion, sir? Well, no way, again, I would say for India and Pakistan, but dialogue. Of course, Pakistan has strived a lot for this uh, objective, that is the establishment of peace in the region. Right now, India has to look for the Pakistan's option. And that is not only in the interest of both the countries, but the whole region. Every, any kind of platform, whether uh, if India needs the, the assistance of America, if India needs even to utilize the OIC or SARC or bilateral negotiations or any other regional major power or any other organization, so welcome, we are ready. I mean, war, it only brings destruction. India right. should understand and peace, they will, it will prosper the region. Right. Have the there, is a, there is a phrase in change management, we say the burning platform. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to use the burning platform. We've got to convince the world that this is a very dangerous situation. Right. If you do not resolve the Kashmir issue, however much you want us to crack down on whatever elements, if any, I don't know, mm -hmm. they are left, that is not going to solve the problem. They're going to sprout up again, and they're going to be far more extreme and difficult to control. Right. So that's one narrative we have to build. The, the consequence of this is we've got to put together mm -hmm. an international mediation group. As right. a consequence of this narrative, Bring an international mediation group, make us two sit together, uh, come to a conclusion, and to your point, national power. Right. National power is a long term thing. And we have to invest in that yeah. we have so to very quickly. Lastly, I would like to say that yes, all the good uh, suggestions, but again, Pakistan has to be on its own feet. Mm -hmm. Of course, we That's have, national power. This is yeah. the only way forward. Yes, give peace a chance. In 20th century, peace right. is the only way forward. But let me assure Modi again mm -hmm. that we are at our guards and we are quite I capable think of... We are aware. Yeah, they know. Sir, on that, 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 but war is not yes. an option. Uh, Heather, Heather Mati Sahib, option. I'm told that we have to conclude the okay. program. <laughs> Heather <laughs> Mati Sahib, Ibrahim Khan Sahib and Dr. Manzoor Afridi Sahib, thank you very much sir, uh, for uh, being here. We as you have listened to our participants, discussion of course has to go on. I think now, uh, since we see that at least there is no more escalation, if it is not de-escalation, now it is perhaps time for some introspection as well. And this is what we are doing right now. Uh, our um, armored forces have shown what they are capable of. Uh, the entire country is proud of them. Now the civilians are talking about improving the quality of our efforts as well. Our prime minister is very clear headed man and he has shown the world that he means business, but he also means peace. Nobody in Pakistan after enduring 17 years of terrorism wants be, uh, a war with any other country. The country doesn't want to uh, allow any kind of terrorism either, either in the country or abroad. But the point is that India or uh, Indian political parties, if they think that they are going to win elections by playing the Pakistan card, it is really merciless and it is a very unkind effort 
instead of doing this, they should be realistic and they should talk their own policies. And once they get elected, they should talk peace with Pakistan. Pakistan has shown the world that it is ready to do, uh, do whatever it takes to build peace in the region. So let us hope in coming days, sanity prevails. This was today's program. Thank you very much for watching us. Take care.